Shoujo Tsubaki tells a story about a daughter of a penniless family who is in for a surprise. It is known to Western and indeed contemporary Japanese audiences, predominantly by way of Suehiro Maruo's Eroguro reinterpretation in comics including a graphic novel of the same name published in English translation as Mr. Arashi's Amazing Freak Show and Hiroshi Harada's film based on Maruo's version, screened at film festivals and released on DVD with English subtitles as Midori. But today, I'm going to be talking about the anime movie adaptation. To call it something disturbing or gory isn't something that will bring justice to it. It is much more than just gore and sex and creepy imagery. It is trying to tell you a story, and a story isn't always told by narration. In fact, the story in Shoujo Tsubaki is told through the imagery that it displays. Audio narration is just a fine addition to the story being told. If you haven't watched the movie, I would suggest you to watch it before continuing with this video. To refresh your mind on what the movie is about, I'll quickly do a recap on it. The story starts off with this girl, Midori, a daughter from a poor family. Her mom is sick, her dad disappeared and she needs money because she wants to attend the school trip her school is having. She met this dude giving her money and gives her an address to go if she don't know where else to go. Whoops, her mother died. Rats eating her lady parts and Midori is lonely. She went to the address and was greeted by these fellas. Turns out they are the act of a freak show. And then this happened. What the... Midori became one of them. A lot of stuff happens, girl kills dogs, girl turns them into soup, girl turns out to have a deal, and then this bottle dwarf dude joined the party. He and Midori fell in love and they began getting married. Man, that's good. That's good for both of you. Shit hits the fan. He made the others do Midori's chores and life was great. Oh, and then this mommy dude. Yeah, this dude with toilet paper on his face. He confessed to Midori. And then dwarf dude be like, quicksand. And then after all the things, they go bye bye. And then these guys come out to say goodbye. And then they went to the city. They were going to go grab some food and then and 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 and, and yeah. So yeah, what a compelling story, right? I mean, who would have guessed? 
So what happened there? What does it mean? What was the ending? Why is it so fake? So my observations of what happened is that in the end she's stuck in purgatory. And what caused her to be in that purgatory you might ask? It is the magic of Matsa Mitsusan. Yeah, the dwarf dude, remember? We're on the same page here? Yeah, okay, sure. How can I say that? It's because we know that based on the scene before that, Masamitsu can manipulate reality by deforming other people's shapes and he can also use his illusion magic to make Midori dream of her perfect life. We can see that it's an illusion because Masamitsu is inside of Midori's dream so we can all assume that what happens in the end where Masamitsu and Midori goes away from the camp is actually the illusion magic being casted by Masamitsu because let me ask you something isn't it weird that here the other acts of the show is just letting them go I believe that Masamitsu has actually murdered the rest of the fairground members because as we can see at the end of the movie look who we see here Masamitsu and the other fairground members. Masamitsu and they all laugh together signifying that they are in the same realm. That they know of each other's existence. And considering Masamitsu died from that thief attack. Well, it can only mean one thing. It could only mean that they are also dead. And that why they are laughing to Midori is because they are mocking her for only beginning her purgatory where the rest of the cast is already done with theirs that they found a way out of theirs that is why when Midori tried to hit them they just went off flying they are untouchable because they have moved on they're not in the same realm as Midori anymore and also because Masamitsu died the illusion magic that he casts on Midori will never be broken. That's why. That's why in the ending where Midori tried to run and search for Masamitsu, she just came back to the same place over and over again, repeating the scene with the sneezing man with the hat up here. It is there to confirm to us that no matter what happened or how long Midori would search, she would probably end up there again, cause it will always be looping. So what do you think about this explanation? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Comment down below. Be sure to like this video and share it with your friends. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'll catch you later.